I chose government surveillance as my research topic. I did this because it is such a prevalent topic right now in the news. Government surveillance has been in and out of the news for the past couple of years. I wanted to learn more than what CNN, MSNBC, or Fox was telling us. I felt it was a very important topic to have somewhat of a better understanding of because it affects pretty much every American citizen and there's no avoiding it. I mean, I use social media and text people almost every day, and the thought of the government spying on my personal data and information is a little freaky to me. But I have always understood and acknowledged the argument for government surveillance, which is that it helps preserve our national security. I can totally understand what the cover of the Internet can provide to terrorists and others who may want to cause harm to the U.S., why governments are so eager to spy on their citizens. So this is where I ask the question, when does government surveillance cross the line from national security to an infringement of privacy? After digging deeper and analyzing not only what systems are put in place in the U.S., but also how they function, I came to the conclusion that although a lot of these systems do end up infringing upon the privacy of the citizens they operate on, a nation cannot not have some sort of a surveillance system in, in place if they want to keep the nation safe in this modern age. So what, what it really comes down to is finding a balance between effectiveness and respecting the privacy of the citizens. Throughout both my paper and documentary, I give examples of systems and analyze how well they balance these two aspects. If a government is to put a surveillance system in place, the protection of the privacy of the citizens should be their number one priority. I also argue the point that the government needs to be more open and honest with its citizens about the extent of their surveillance. I found it amazing how the true extent of government surveillance has only been revealed to the public in the most recent years, and even then there is still much we do not know about. But overall, I found this to be a very interesting topic to research and learn more about. I chose to make a documentary for my multi-genre pro project, not just because I thought it would be fun and different, but also because I thought it would be the best way to get my point across in a condensed, simple way. The documentary gave me a lot more freedom with how I was able to present my argument and research. I was not constrained as much as I was when writing my research paper. With the documentary, I was able to be a little more informal and talk more like how I would normally. Even though I was able to include a lot more detail in my research paper, I still feel the documentary was the best fit for getting my point across to a larger group of people. Most people, including myself, when looking to learn more about a certain subject, they want to learn as much as possible in the least amount of time. So with the documentary, I was able to condense my 10-page paper into a 9-minute video, where I was able to still clearly state my stance on the topic and provide plenty of evidence to support it. But overall, this was a real fun, fun project to work on, and I hope it is a good representation of the hard work I put into my original essay. So please enjoy I Spy. There is no such thing as absolute privacy in America. There is no place in America outside of judicial reach. That's the bargain. And we made that bargain over two centuries ago to achieve two goals. To achieve the very, very important goal of privacy and to achieve the very important goal of security. Cell phones, computers, laptops, tablets, social media, email. Technology has become a major part of the American way of life. Our day-to-day -day life has been become engulfed by technology, whether it's by us posting photos of ourselves on Facebook or Instagram, sending out business emails, texting our friends to make plans for the weekend, or even completing assignments online for school. Most would hope and assume that what we say and do on our personal devices would remain personal. The truth is everything a person does online contributes to their own personal digital footprint and is open for the world to see. In our modern age, the internet has unfortunately given people a platform and cover to commit illegal acts 
and plan out harmful attacks, which has forced many countries to develop some form of public surveillance. Most people are aware that the government surveys on them and other citizens, but only in recent years has the true extent of government surveillance been revealed to the public. These new revelations have begged the question of when does government surveillance cross the line from national security to an invasion of one's privacy. Well, although a lot of these programs do infringe on the privacy of the citizens they operate on, some form of public surveillance is necessary for the safety of the nation and its citizens. Before getting too deep into the complexities of modern day surveillance, we must have a mutual understanding of what privacy is. Privacy is a concept which is up for interpretation. What one person thinks should remain private, another might see as something which should be open to the public. But I believe most would agree anything someone does while under the assumption of what they are doing is private should remain private. For example, if I were to text my friend, what are you doing this weekend? And he were to reply, oh nothing much. Even though our conversation is not about anything important, I would hope that our conversation would remain between the two of us. Luckily in America, personal data can only be accessed if there is a strong enough reason against said person or a good enough reason behind the collection of said data. Although this may be true, it still has never stopped the government from finding a way to spy on its citizens. The topic of public surveillance covers a very large spectrum of surveillance programs, but for the purpose of this documentary, I'm going to focus on government surveillance specifically. Government surveillance is nothing new. Most know that it has been going on for years. Police stations in the 70s began cataloging information and fingerprints of criminals and people of interest in their communities. And many of these early forms of police surveillance found success. In New York, for example, 60% of arrests made in the 70s used similar surveillance systems. Police cataloging of criminal data is a perfect example of how a governmental surveillance system can be effective in doing its job while not interfering with the privacy of the citizens. A proper surveillance system should be able to get its job done while not interfering with the public, public's private life. But as you can guess, the old police cataloging systems of the past are now considered to be very primitive and have been replaced by much more modern and controversial systems of surveillance. This new generation of technologically advanced surveillance systems has only increased the risk and pro possibility of the public's privacy being breached. The sheer size and operational capacities of these new systems have led to the increased probability of unfair treatment among participants. Historically, this could be seen during the Vietnam War where anti-war protesters, socialists, and people seen as being communist sympathizers were placed under intense and unfair surveillance. Also during the Civil Rights Movement, people such as Martin Luther King Jr. were placed under federal surveillance because him and others were seen as being national threats. There is no reason for the government to unfairly survey a person or group of people solely based on their beliefs or association with a specific group. Of course, unless it is proven that said group or person poses an actual threat to the public and national security. Even then, if the government suspects a certain group to be a threat to national security, they must go through the proper legal systems in order to be able to collect personal data. In America, we are granted the right to privacy in the form of the Fourth Amendment, which protects us from unreasonable search and seizure but the conflict comes when deciding whether or not the Fourth Amendment applies to personal online data. In the Supreme Court case, United States versus United States District Court, the court found that governmental intrusion of private electrical data and conversation is in fact protected by the Fourth Amendment. The court's ruling on the Fourth Amendment demonstrates how it should protect our online privacy just as much as it protects our physical privacy. But many other court cases have found that physical surveillance, that being surveillance using cameras, of citizens outside their house is not protected by the Fourth Amendment. Although the thought of being watched in public may be unsettling to some, we must understand that some physical surveillance out in public is necessary for national security. Many of us Americans know government surveillance is going on, but the majority of us do not know the complete extent of the U.S. surveillance programs. In 2013, Snowden leaked out masses of NSA information to the public and exposed the extent of world surveillance to everyone. The Snowden documents created a nationwide discussion of government surveillance and privacy. 
His documents revealed an international coalition called Five Eyes, who basically collects data and communications from around the world to find threats within each other's nations. Five Eyes is comprised of the US, the United Kingdom, Canada, New Zealand, and Australia. Five Eyes might have good intentions for acquiring our da data, but it does not excuse their met methods of doing so. The NSA, for example, has been known to work with corporations such as Google, Facebook, Yahoo, and Twitter to collect your search history and data from their services. Although a lot of what we post on the services provided by these companies are open to the public, such things as emails and private messages sent through these services should remain private. They also allow each, each other to use their surveillance programs on each other's citizens, thus violating the privacy of the people they deem to be threats in other countries. This only opens up a whole new can of worms, where the privacy of citizens of different countries is not being protected, thus granting outside countries free range of citizens of foreign countries. It was not until after 9-11 did national security become a major topic of discussion in the U.S. After the tragic events of 9-11, many Americans called for some kind of reform in national security. The U.S. Department of Defense responded with powerful counterterrorism and data mining programs. But Congress came back with the Patriot Act, which was their attempt to put Americans at ease. The Patriot Act is an example of how government surveillance can be effective in catching terrorists while also keeping the rights and privacy of, American, of the American people in mind. The Patriot Act was designed with flexibility and safeguards to prevent the abuse of it by the federal government. And there was little to no evidence of fe federal government abusing the Patriot Act and the powers it gave to the federal government during the years it was active. Governments need to have surveillance programs to protect their citizens from outside threats who function through the internet while also ensuring their programs will not violate the privacy of their own citizens. There is no possible way to avoid having a digital footprint or using technology in your day-to-day -day life. We the American people put our information out on the internet every day in the form of social media, email, and even just searching stuff on Google. Even though we acknowledge a lot of what we do online is open to the public, there is still a lot we do under the assumption that what we are doing is private. But with the current political climate of the world, it has for the most part forced governments to spy on their own citizens and citizens of other countries. Moving forward as a country, we must decide how much of our personal information we are willing to give up for the sense of security. In the end, it is just one big game of I spy.